Hey, what's up? I'm Seth Fun here at Crafty One Customs. Today I'm going to be talking about rigging Ballyhoo a couple of different ways for Northeast tuna fishing, both yellow, big eye, albacore, whatever tuna fishing you're doing. Uh, Ballyhoo is a great application. It mimics uh, a natural forage fish for tuna. Uh, a lot of people kind of shy away from rigging them for two reasons. Uh, one, they're kind of difficult to get up in the Northeast, but two, a lot of people don't know how to rig them. So hopefully in the video today, we're going to show you a couple different ways you can rig the Ballyhoo. I definitely you know, recommend this bait for most of our applications. I put them on the back of the bars. We troll them naked, um, definitely in the canyon. Uh, over Joe's shoots. There's a lot of different ways you could fish this bait and we're going to show you how to rig them. So first of all, this is a large size ballyhoo. They come in a handful of different sizes. They come in dink, they come in mediums, larges, and selects. Uh, so first thing, you know, is, is getting a quality bait. I prefer Baitmaster's bait. They ship right to your house. Um, you can call them up. Usually I try to do a week before the trip and, uh, you know, you, you tell them what you want. It shows up in a styrofoam box. You put them in your freezer and they come brined and ready to go. Now when they brine these baits, they do a combination of salt, baking soda. Um, they don't use formaldehyde, but those are the two key ingredients in a good brine. Uh, the baking soda prevents these baits from becoming discolored and the salt kind of firms them up a little bit. I had a question before, a guy asked me about salting them. Um, I do not salt these baits. When you salt the bait, they get real stiff and they don't get limber and they don't swim properly. So I stay away from salting. Um, if I'm gonna be on like an overnight trip, what I might do is just dust the baits from the fin forward just to firm up the head. But other than that, I definitely leave the bait unsalted. Um, so first thing you're gonna wanna do is thaw them off in a bucket. A big mistake I see a lot of people making is when they're defrosting the baits, you want the baits to be in the bucket bill down. You don't wanna do them tail down because the tail is the most important part of the bait. And if you put it in the bucket tail down and the bait's frozen, you can snap the tails off. You can disfigure the tails and you want that tail to be as straight and perfect as possible. So the next thing you do is once they're defrosted, I make a little incision right here in the butt and I come just a tiny little bit back up to these back two fins. And what that does is it allows a slightly larger opening for when you're shitting the bait. Here, I'll do it with another one that I haven't done it with yet. Here's an example of a, of a, of a bait that's been, you know, the tail snapped off. I, I'm not gonna fish that bait. But that's what you don't want to have happen. And that, that happens when you put the baits in the bucket upside down. So here, we make a small incision right here in the butt, just large enough that when you're pooing the bait, uh, it doesn't really, see, there we go, okay? And what that does is it opens up the cavity in the bottom, allows the bait to become a little more limber. The second thing I do is on the back of the bait, there's like a line, almost like a lateral line that goes straight down the center of the bait. Very gently, we hold the bait here. See, Grub, see if you can get a close up of this. As I squeeze it, you start to see the meat come off the spine. And when I get to the back here, there's a little trick here. Not a lot of people know about lift that up about 20 degrees and you hear this crack. That's what really makes the tail move. So now the bait's cracked. I'll show you the difference. This one's not been cracked. This one has been cracked. And that's what we're looking for is a really good paddling action on the bait in the water. Okay, so the next step is I take the bill and there's a little piece of membrane that comes all the way to the back of the throat. I kind of grab it mid bill, I give it a crack and then when you pull it back, you'll see that membrane peel off. Okay, you wanna get rid of that. There's two different style uh, rigs that we fish. It's really common uh, up in the Northeast to see these, these bait springs. If I'm gonna be fishing the bait naked or split bill like Lou's gonna show you how to do, uh, my preferred method is copper wire. I do a quarter ounce chin lead and you can adjust this lead depending on the sea conditions. So heavier seas, bigger hooks, possibly a slightly larger egg sinker. Uh, if you want more of a surface presentation, a real delicate natural presentation, I just want enough, this is the keel weight, to keep the bait from going on its side or spinning in any which direction. That's what the purpose of that lead is. 
And then what we do is we do a little trace of copper wire in front of the copper uh, crimp. Okay, so what we do is we come in under the gill and dead out the center. And then what we want to do is place the hook and everything kind of centered on the eyeballs. Okay. And then what we do is we run the copper wire through the eye of the bait. We're going to do that twice. A lot of times what I'll do is here, eyeball the bait. So you take his eyes and you pop them out. That just makes running the copper wire a little bit easier. And this could be done with like a, a bow and arrow shaft or, a, or an arrow shaft. That's pretty common to be used. And what you do is you run the shaft through the eyes just to get rid of them. So now that I've taken the eyes out, it's time for me to run the copper. I run the copper twice through the eyes, and what that does is fastens the bill. What you want to do is run your finger along the wire, and then you're going to come from under the chin to centered out the top of his mouth. Once you've done that, you pull it through, and I make my first wrap behind that. Then I spring it up the nose. Make a series of twists till you reach the front, then start working your way back down. And when I'm finished, that's what it should look like. Now, the whole pull point from the bait is from the nose. If you have any pull point from behind the lead, you're not gonna get that action. And what we wanna do is take all of the pull pressure off the hook. Um, if you get into a situation where the, the bait's not swimming properly, a little hack you can do is just put a small little cut in front of the hook just to give the hook a little more room to breathe. But now that's, that's how I'm going to fish that bait um, naked or you fish it skirted. Um, but I would say on 99% of my tuna applications, that's what I'm fishing. Um, you can dress them up a little bit. This particular one is an Islander uh, quarter ounce dusting head. I feel like... Uh, you know, it's, 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 you know, you can fish this on a 25 size reel, 30 reel, 50s and 130s, and we definitely pull these for, you know, much larger fish in the canyons later in the season. So that's one way you can rig the ballyhoo. The second way you can rig the ballyhoo if you don't have copper wire is with a spring rig. Spring rigs tend to be a little bit more popular in the Northeast. And the reason for that is, uh, uh, a lot of guys in the canyons are fishing heavier style uh, dress baits like this Joe Shoot five ounce head. This is this is pretty commonplace when we're targeting big eyes. Uh, it's very popular for the giant tunas up in the Carolinas, and it's definitely made its way here uh, as a you know as a as a go to bait for most fishermen in this area. Um, you'll see them in the tackle shops, and when you see them naked like that, this is the way that you're going to rig that bait. Uh, to go and, and fish it offshore. Um, so what we have is uh, this particular hook's a 9 -0. And then what I've done is I've crimped in a small piece of number 10 wire, number 12 wire. And I'm just gonna show you what this pin looks like. It's a small, about an inch and a half piece of wire with a 90 degree bend in it. And I slide that into my crimp right before I crimp the line. And what that's going to serve to do is this will be the pull point on the bait. So again, we take another fresh bait, okay, make a small incision in the back, ship the bait, push everything out of the cavity, and then again we're going to just crack the back. Gentle on this. If you do too firm, you'll start pulling the scales off. And then again, the most important thing there is that lift on the back. Now that the bait's nice and limber, let me take the eyes out. Actually, we don't need to take the eyes out because we're not running copper. So what we do is we run the hook, come out the back, and then what we do with this pin is you take this pin and slide it right center up his mouth and out the top. Okay? I'm gonna take that off too. Okay, now we're gonna take our spring. Where's our spring? It's right here. Take the spring, you line, you line it on the, on the mono, slide it down, come over the bill, and then 
Let's take a little more of this beak off. Okay. Come over the top, grab that pin, and just simply twist it around. Okay. And that's a spring rigged ballyhoo. This one, I'm going to give it a little bit of room to breathe. Just a touch. I want to make sure that back can stretch out. Maybe a skirt can go over that. Yeah. Now your heavier Joe shoot uh, can slide over the top of this and has something a little bit more substantial to grab onto. Um, but those are two ways that we rigged Ballyhoo uh, up in the Northeast. I'd say it's the two most common ways, pin rig and copper wire. Lou's going to show you how he rigs his split bills. All right, so say you've been trolling for an hour and you're marking fish and you're not getting bit. You know, you got bit in the morning, they're eating the shoots, they're eating the, you know, the sea witch skirts. You can actually leave it just the way it was. Okay. Um, so basically, you'll be rigging the same exact bait. You know, same thing Seth did. You separate the meat from the back, shit the bait, hook, hook placement is good, the pull point's good. Um, what I like to do is just a little shorter bill and just come back on here, take this off. So basically you're gonna create a Rapala, give you a little more stealthy action. So you take that off kind of short, and then instead of wrapping the bill, you're gonna take this mono, kind of zoom in right there on the center, and you're gonna split the bill. So now the mono comes out the top, almost a full 90 like that. And then what I like to do is I'll wrap right down to the mono, You don't want it too far back. And then wrap the front of that bill. And you kind of don't want the wire to bunch up. So usually if I want to make one of these baits, I'll cut the wire so it's um, kind of short like that. But now what that does, instead of making that bait pull straight, you're going to have just that little amount of tension. Like see how that mono has the memory to go up like that? Just a little bit of that is going to drive the head down now. And sometimes too, when I do this, I'll take the fins off also. You can either twist them off or cut them off with scissors. And um, that's gonna make that bait swim, you know, really, really nice in, in the canyon, uh, just by having that, that pull point with no skirt. It just also gives you a much more natural presentation. But just doing that sometimes is the difference between getting bit and not getting bit. I haven't had your hand in a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that helps you get tight. Fuck you. <laughs>